I do want to drop this in here. I was talking to some of my Arsenal friends during the game, talking to a couple of Arsenal fans, and obviously Nick on the Discord and a couple of other people have highlighted Arsenal are trying to change, and you can clearly see there's a positive change against Palace. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I just wanted to drop this in at the top of the video because a lot of people are saying, and uh, you know, I spoke to a Remedy and a couple of other guys, it's interesting just to see the difference in approach between different Arsenal fans. I felt like that was quite a positive game for Arsenal. I feel like it's a good, it's not a turning point, but it's a confidence builder. And there are different kinds of games. In a season like this, it's very easy to treat every game as like one long kind of slog. It felt that way, it felt like it was getting that way towards the end of last season. And then there was a reinvigoration and then it kind of slipped back to the old mentality at the mid part of this season, right? And I feel like Arsenal kind of need to reset. For the players, I think Dubai was a bit of a reset. And I think the fans maybe need a bit of a reset too. Not every game is going to be perfect, flawless football. Not every game is going to be this controlling level that Arsenal fans particularly want. But a couple of people said to me, like, oh, I didn't particularly think that the uh, that Arsenal played particularly well today. No, I kind of agree with that. I don't think they create enough clear-cut chances, but I definitely feel like Arteta has got something going here. And I feel like that deserves support. That deserves to be studied and kind of... You know, we should be speaking things into existence if we're Arsenal fans. Not that I am, but if I'm an Arsenal fan, I'm doing that. And what I find interesting about it is a lot of Arsenal fans feel very frustrated right now with the style of football because of what they did against Liverpool, because there's been a confidence loss over the last couple of weeks because of the results. And rightly so, right? Like they should be questioning those things. And, but there's been people calling for ridiculous things like Arteta to go. I think that's a whole other long conversation that kind of needs to be unpacked with, you know, like the Arsenal core fans. Inside the stadium, there still seems to be a frustration though. Like when they're not doing what Arsenal need to do or what Arsenal are expected to do, there is like an almost like, hey, do it. There are going to be times where this team is frustrated by a team like Palace. They're very defensive. They're very Roy Hodgson. They're looking to counterattack to all those kind of things. Sometimes that just needs them to just be pushed over the edge, tipped a little bit. And that is coming. I would say like Arsenal feel the fans at the moment feel slightly too judgmental of the system and the players for me. And, you know, maybe that's the Arsenal way. Maybe you're very high standards. I get that. But there's a point where I feel like you kind of need to go look like we, we, we're still on something here. We're still in the points race. Stay in it. And there's a chance. At the moment, it feels like there's almost, it, the flick towards negativity is almost a bit too quick. And I get it. Like there's frustrating games like this where, you know, there are some misplaced passes. Zinchenko is a bit frustrating. The midfield order feels a bit frustrating. But then there are great moments where you're like, ah, oh, right. That consistency comes with support and time. But you've got to have both those things, support and time. I'm saying, like, I think there's still more to come from this Arsenal team. It feels like it's not fully juiced. And that is exciting if I'm an Arsenal fan. How do you work out which part of the season you lost the title in? And obviously, can you do that midway through the season when you still feel like there is so long to go? You're very much still in the pack and you put in some pretty easy performances against people like Crystal Palace. Welcome back to the Rose McKenna channel. A 5-0 win for Arsenal means that Arsenal keep up with Man City and Liverpool, even if Man City and Liverpool have games in hand. This part of the season has become a little bit confusing. There is this new 10-day, 10-day thing going on. Teams get their rests. Who's making up ground on other people? Did Arsenal ever really lose ground? Yes, is the answer. But like, where do Arsenal therefore sit if they're a game ahead of everyone else and everyone else is kind of in their own transitional phase or losing players or whatever else it is? Every team has peaks and troughs in any season. City had their peak at the end of last season. They had their trough at the beginning of last season and they still won the league. Um, not saying, therefore, that Arsenal can afford to have this trough, because actually it's very difficult sometimes to recover from these kind of things. But when you look at what Mikel Arteta was saying in his pre-match press conference, in the uh, the programme for the game, and also just over the last couple of weeks, speaking about their warm weather training and all that kind of stuff, you can see what he was trying to do with the team. You can see he was trying to regalvanize a side that had clearly lost a bit of confidence in the where they were going. And in coming back against Crystal Palace, I think they've refound some of that identity that has been so important. Let me talk about that identity. Last season, when Arsenal were playing their beautiful box football and so much of the system seemed to be working, people seemed a little bit behind the tactical trend. Arsenal were 10% ahead of everyone else, if not 20 or 30% at the beginning of the season. Fitness-wise, they looked fantastic. Tactics-wise, they looked ahead of everyone else. They were really knitting together. There was a gelling and a chemistry and a mesh that other sides just didn't seem to have, even Man City. There was a belief around that as well, something which, by the way, is still important this season. And there was belief in individual players, what they 
brought to the system. This season, some of that seemed a little bit out of whack, a little bit out of line. People started to question Zinchenko, wondering what, whether Saka was found out, what space Martinelli was now able to find, who was in there at the striker, and could they make that midfield work in front of a really solid back line? Arsenal were trying to answer some of the questions of the previous season that let them down, and some of the answers weren't quite coming together yet. They brought in someone like Urien Timber. Can't use that as an answer if they're sitting on the bench. Partey is out. Xhaka have been allowed to move on. In a game like this Crystal Palace game, you don't want to say they've solved those problems. But what you would say is they found that middle ground, so to speak. At the beginning of the season, they were much happier to sit back and be an Arsenal defensive team or a side that were much more likely to like throttle the other team until they won it. It meant that they weren't quite as attacking as the previous season, quite as enterprising in the same way, or quite as exciting as we'd expected Arsenal to be. And so that took the edge off some of what they were doing. But now, after you've had that little dip, after you've had this period where you go, right, we just need to win here. We just need to be title challengers. We need to be pragmatic. We need to be smart. We need to be the team that wins the title, which is the side that played the football to win it rather than, you know, stealing everyone's hearts like in the previous season. And you realise what it is that Arsenal are putting together is now the balance. The balance of that excitement of the previous season, the free, open, goal-scoring side, along with some of the rotation, and this new, more pragmatic, more defensive team, a side that's much more happy to go, you know what, we're just going to kill you with... Um, basically, we're going to neutralise you rather than absolutely throttling. And that's what they did against Palace. Now, Palace and themselves were pretty poor in this game. In fact, Palace fans at the end of the game held up a sign saying it's the end of this era, we're not happy with the ownership, we're not happy with the direction of the club, and that's fair enough. That's almost academic in terms of what Arsenal did to them, but Arsenal took them apart, right? Early on... It wasn't so much about this open, free-flowing football. It was about that pressure, the constant tap, 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 jabbing the opposition that Arsenal fans have become a bit more used to. They got the thrills and the uh, big moments from set pieces. Gabriel rising well above everyone else. And then, of course, the other one being an own goal from the goalkeeper. And by the time that it came to the third goal, which was a brilliant counter-attacking piece of football that you'd expect to have seen from other Premier League sides... Arsenal were very much in control. It was never in question that even at 1-0 or 2-0, Arsenal were going to do something special or at least do something that they needed to do. And here's the thing. like I get that there'll be questions over the lineup. People want to talk about this perfect 11. This, for me, is A2 or A3 under someone like Mikel Arteta. And I can tell you why, right? If you start the game with Zinchenko, Gabriel, Saliba and Ben White at the back in front of David Raya, that is A for me, possibly apart from Zinchenko at left back. I think Arsenal were looking to move on from Zinchenko this season, not in a terrible way, but just give them a bit more variation. Maybe a Kivior is in there. Do you get what I'm saying? The midfield, I actually think that's Arsenal's preferred midfield. I, I can't see someone I'd move out there. Declan Rice was in there. Um, Martin Odegaard, obviously, the club, club captain's in there. And Kai Havertz is also in there as well. That's the control they want. Uh, two of those midfielders subbed out late on really paid off, and I'll tell you why in a second. Bakaya Saka, Gabriel Jesus, and then Trossard was the only one up front that maybe you wouldn't want to start every game. But then, look at this. This is the A3, A4 team. Kivior, Nketiah, Jorginho, Martinelli, and Emil Smith-Rowe. Someone that just a couple of weeks ago, people were speaking about leaving Arsenal. Apparently, they went away for this warm weather training in Dubai. He came back. Even in that training, he looked good. He looked hungry. He looked like the kind of player that you want as part of a squad rotational player, if not even someone who could be pushing the first team regulars. That is good news for Arsenal. They've got these players. Jorginho coming back. Fantastic. You saw that late ball. What a ball, by the way, to Gabriel Martinelli to go through and just easily slot away. The goalkeeper twice, just not really even bothering to dive for the ball. Worrying for Crystal Palace, but great for Arsenal. Two amazing finishes from Martinelli. Two times where he was very assured, very calm. Exactly the kind of thing you want from a sub player who's just come on. For a player who previously in the season had probably underwhelmed a little bit, it, for Trossard, I thought Trossard had a really solid game. I love what he does, does for the average positions. I love the contribution of Trossard in this because what he's willing to do is be a little bit more defensive, do the role that he needs to do for someone like uh, a, a, I, yeah, I, Gabriel Jesus to shine, right? He's willing to just dot around the field. Gabriel Jesus much more concentrated in where he is. He's much more up front than he has been dropping deep more recently. And that's because Trossard and people like that were doing the work behind him. And of course, People who were maligned earlier in the season, like Havertz, did a lot of that defensive work today, meaning that basically they had two very solid sides. 
I love the combination of Trossard and Havertz, and especially behind someone who loves to wander a little bit, come in and out of the game, and kind of worry that back line of Palace in Gabriel Jesus. I want to see a Trossard and a Havertz doing the work that they need to do in order to enable that. That wasn't happening for quite a while for Arsenal. This team looked way more, um, I'll, I'll say like, dynamic because they had the committed roles rather than what you saw against Liverpool where they were just isolating players, trying to go by them. It wasn't really working and Liverpool were thriving off that. If Arsenal do that against Palace, Palace thrive today. Arsenal moving the ball, they were moving it at pace against Palace, they were able to get and cut through very early on, making the most of the uh, set pieces that they obviously also did against Liverpool, but you get my point, like, they needed to do more of that against Liverpool, they needed to capitalise on where they were strong. I feel like I've gone away from warm weather training, honed things a little bit, even just mindly tinkered with stuff, and we're seeing a different side. A, they look rested, they look a lot more assured on the ball, a lot more relaxed, and B, they also look like they know much more about positions. Let's talk about David Raya, by the way. Decent game for him, obviously, you know, getting a, a 5 0 is really good, but the distribution for the third goal, where it was almost a Liverpool Allison esque piece of distribution, is exactly what Arsenal were looking for when they brought him in. I'm not necessarily saying, by the way, that I don't think that. Um, Maybe a Ramsdale is capable of that. But I do think that Raya, uh, that's what they were looking for from him. Get them on the front foot, get them counter-attacking, get them in a position where it's like, right, that's why we brought him into the team, that's why we want him. And you could see players really streaming down the field. Trossard on the other side, really beautiful finish as well for him, by the way. And just a really lovely assist from the right-hand side. Great ball through, easy, nowhere near offside. I don't even know why they checked it for offside. You could see it with, their, with the naked eye. Really easy ball for him. Arsenal control that midfield as well. Chris Richards is obviously a defender transitioning into that area, so it makes it a lot easier for them to control that. And then if you look at the rest of the team, like I don't really feel like they Will Hughes ever really got a grip on the game. The way less touches. Chris Richards was basically part of the back of the back four. And Jefferson Lerma, as much as he had touches all over the field, not really ever, ever sure that he got into the game in the way that he needed to. Arsenal walked all over Palace today, but this isn't the game that Arsenal need to worry about. If I look at Arsenal's coming up games and I look at the matches that they've still got, next couple of weeks, Palace, great game for them to go away to. They've got Liverpool at home then. If they win in that game, that changes their season. Then if you go to West Ham, Burnley, Porto then, this is a really key run of games. Then Newcastle, that key run there after the Nottingham Forest game is where Arsenal's season is made or lost for me. Like, I get it. You know, people will say, you know, you've got the run in now to the end of the season. Those games will be confidence building, they will be system building, and they will either uh, nullify whatever confidence Arsenal have right now or invigorate this Arsenal team and push them onto the next level. I really enjoyed uh, what was done and said today. Uh, I, I think Arteta has come back, not punchy, but with just the right level of confidence, just the right level of, hey, like we've got something we need to achieve here and we, we were in danger of falling away from that. It's still very much in touch. They're still in the Champions League against Porto, a team they can win against, and they're still very much in the Premier League. They've obviously played one more game than Liverpool and City, but they're very much in the running here. If you wait for City or Liverpool to trip up, which inevitably I think one of those two sides will lose uh, at least one, two more games this season because of the diversity of the league, I think we'll see Arsenal still very much in the title mix. I never put them out of it, but you get what I'm saying. I really enjoyed that game today. Really good to watch. We watched it on the Discord. If you're into it, you can get free on the Discord, but we watched with Patreon members today. We watched with Nick, and it's fantastic to see everyone else joining it. I'll put the link down there in the description. We've also obviously got a Patreon if you want to support the work that we're doing here on the channel. We're trying to post as regularly as possible, and obviously with a uh, active Discord and Patreon, that will make it a lot more possible. Really enjoy what you guys are saying down in the comments, by the way. Really took a lot of your uh, feedback on from last time. Hoping to implement more of that over the coming days and weeks. Appreciate you guys. Chat to you in a while. Much love. Bye.